Dust and Elysian Tale is one of the best games of the 2010s. It released in 2012, first on Xbox 360, and as a kid, I was hooked with this game. A decade later, it finally got ported to Steam, and when I discovered it, it was on sale, a steal in my eyes, so I bought it for a second time. And man, it holds up so well! Wait, what do you mean it's always been on Steam? And that was true for a time in 2012, but in May during 2013, it was released on Microsoft Windows, aka Steam. Now, you may be asking yourself, what does this have to do with indie crossover fighting games? While Dust is technically a fighting game, it technically doesn't fit in this category. Well, you're wrong, and I'm going to explain why. See, on my daily collaborative gaming channel, I posted a video discussing art versus content while playing Dust and Elysian Tale, a game that I actually used to play on this channel back in the day when this was a gaming channel. Anyway, Red was convinced to buy Dust and streamed it in Discord for a bit, and I joined him. We were talking about this game, I was saying how it was an Xbox exclusive, and while looking up the game on Wikipedia, not only was I proven wrong, but I also discovered something incredible. Dust is a playable character in the crossover fighting game Indie Pogo, which was released in July 2018 on Steam. Now I have talked about a very specific yet controversial indie fighting game called Bounty Battle, which we'll get into later, but this discovery of one of my favorite games being a crossover in an indie fighting game opened me up to a very specific genre of gaming indie crossfighter games. And so my hunt for every one of these games started. My first immediate problem that I've stumbled on is not knowing how many there are in existence, especially because some of these defunct games don't even exist anymore. I found a Reddit post that listed a bunch of these games, which is how I found most of these. So shout out to Toon Adventure on the Fighters subreddit. I also found some on itch.io, a place I never typically go, but I'm trying to make a definitive list here and I'm desperate. Indie Rumble was a canceled Kickstarter that ended the same year it started. In 2022, Rumbleware reached 10K in three days and only released one update on their Kickstarter. Eventually, people were wondering why the game was canceled and it was due to internal problems at the company, which actually meant, uh, yeah, we're not going into that. In any case, the roster is one that I recognize a lot of characters from. Pizza Tower, VVVVVV, Ultra Kill, Spark the Electric Jester, and even the Postal Dude was supposed to be a boss at some point. Even Indie Pogo had some crossover characters in this game, which is another indie crossfighter. Some of these stages were based on other indie games like Super Hot and Death and Taxes. Indie Assault is a really confusing case study. One side of the story is that it went defunct in 2015 and is only available on some shady website. Another side of the story is that there is a Kickstarter active at the time of writing this with no funding and a goal of $1.5 million that ends in a month. The answer to which side of the story is correct is yes, because the developer name on both sites is Imagination Vent LLC. They haven't made a post on X since 2019 and their official website is broken. So either this person is trying to get this game up up and running again, or someone is using this person's name for their Kickstarter. Jared is the CEO of Imagination Vent and left in 2017. And that's about all we know of the game's status. So I heavily doubt that Jared made this Kickstarter, especially since there was no promotion for it on any of his various social media platforms, both personal and under his company name. But maybe we'll never know unless updates about this project are made. The roster to this game is pretty unknown with five characters names, four character skins listed, and a bunch of other nameless characters known None of these I recognize. Indie Game Battle is still an active Steam page, but you can no longer download this game, making it defunct. Early Access Game. What the developer has to say. Nothing. The developer literally said nothing. I don't think I've ever seen a message like this before on Steam. Well, since the developer doesn't want to say anything, it's my turn to find the clues to solve why this game went defunct. And you want to know the worst part? This was one of the games that had Dust as a playable character. What's really sad about this game specifically is that it actually looks really fun to play, not just because Dust is a playable character, but because both the characters and the scenery are actually in 3D instead of everything being in 2D like most of these fighting games. Currently, if I were to call any of these games the Indie Smash Bros, it would be be this one. Sorry, Bounty Battle. Sadly, it's not available to play anymore. But why? Well, considering the top reviews are negative essays, this may be why it was canceled, or at least gives us a clue as to why this game shut down. My first clue is that one of the negative reviews is a person who has worked with a developer at Blob Game Studios, revealing the developer's name, Felix. 
This review was posted two years after the game was in early access, and it paints Felix as a person who hates criticism, uses blackmail, and emotional manipulation. The only reason why I'm mentioning this in the first place is that it answers this question of why this game shut down. It gives a voice to one of the people who worked with Felix directly, and there are actual sources at the bottom of this review. Now, let me be clear. I don't know any of these people in this situation. And I'm only looking on the surface level because truthfully, this is none of my business. But at least now we have our answer. This is like the second time one of these games have been shut down due to a internal problem with the company. And I hope it doesn't happen a third time. And no, I'm not doing some dumb foreshadowing that I genuinely hate when friendships shatter like this. Anyways, the roster of this game was huge with 79 characters, some of which were planned but never added due to the game's cancellation. Some of the characters that stood out to me are familiar faces as well as other characters that I would have never expected in a game like this, such as from Goat Simulator, Dust, Clive and Wrench, Riddle School, SCP, Fancy Pants Adventures, Enter the Gungeon, and even Salad Fingers. I'm telling you, this could have been a good game with a stacked cast of characters, but due to it being stuck in early access for two years, the negative reviews, as well as the developer's reputation, it sadly stayed a broken mess for years, until eventually, it got removed off of Steam. Now that we've gone over all of the quite literally unplayable games, these next eight games are honorable mentions that for one reason or another don't really fit in the indie crossfighter genre. Personally, when I think of this genre, I think of the entire cast being from different indie games fighting each other in one game, not just one character who is a cameo from an indie game. Because if that was the case, then Dust would technically be on this list, as well as a bunch of other games. Street Fighter vs. The Alpha Male Squadron is from itch.io. As if you couldn't tell. As you can see, most of these characters are from Street Fighter, aka a AAA game, and also TV show characters are here too for some reason. Scott Pilgrim vs. Street Fighter. Scott Pilgrim technically started as an indie comic, so it could be considered for this list, but also Windows protected my PC, so I probably shouldn't try to run this game. This didn't pop up with the other H.io game, by the way. Rivals of Aether is mostly an original fighting game with a few guest characters such as Shovel Knight and Ori. Most of the characters are original as far as I can tell, and it doesn't really match the criteria of indie crossfighter since most of these characters are not from other indie games. Pocket Rumble? I mean, it has indie game characters as villains, and as far as I can tell, most of the playable characters are original characters, which defeats the purpose of this concept. Super Clash Crossover! It's a game to create characters using code, but it isn't out and no it's not super clash bros that's a completely different game made by the same devs and also basically has no indie characters as far as i can see team indie is a cooperative platformer not a fighting game cool concept especially since it has clunk from awesome knots but it's also defunct since the publisher unlisted the game why maybe negative reviews but honestly i just couldn't find the answer super indie carts it's a racing game Need I say more? Indie Clash, formerly known as a reboot of Clash X or Clash Cross as it's pronounced, had a lot of popular indie game characters from Duck Game, Undertale, Hollow Knight, Dead Cells, Cuphead, Celeste, Hades, Slay the Spire, Untitled Goose Game, and Disco Elysium, among others. And the concept art looked really appealing. And I would show gameplay, but it has yet to be released. That's okay, apparently it'll be available at all consoles, but until then, let's take a look at the original game. Clash Cross. This one was developed by both Fruit Bits and Great Pixel Art. It was released everywhere, both digitally and physically. But why can't I find it? Wait. Welcome to Fantendo, wiki of video game fan and news and discussion. This isn't a real game. I've been a fool. This is a fake video game, but the attention to detail is actually incredible, and I definitely urge anyone to take their time to fully go over this page, because it is genuinely amazing artwork, and it is so in-depth that it makes me think, maybe the idea of an indie crossover fighter is better than an actual game. I mean, think about it. You don't need the copyright to draw fan art. You can draw any character you want. You don't have to learn coding or animation. And you can imagine, with the help of the description of all the characters, how these movements are implemented. Indie Brawl is Windows protected your PC. Indie Brawl has great music and a cast of 18 characters I don't recognize. It starts out with mandatory two-player gameplay right out the gate. 
seven unlocked interactive stages with a total of 16, and adventure mode and the museums are locked for some reason. I finished a level, got a Team 1 windscreen, and that's it! The combat consists of two action buttons, and depending on the direction you are aiming, it will change the type of attack or movement of the character since there is both a basic attack and a special attack. Pretty simple game, honestly. Indie Action is what looks to be a mobile game that I had to use up to down for, which I thought was shady, but other people had said that it's fine to use for the most part. There's silence. And a sound effect. A very different vibe to the previous game. There's seven characters, one of which I recognize, with nine levels in total. So at first I couldn't figure out how to move, looked it up, and hated the controls. I changed them to a more comfortable position when it was previously on garlic, which is something I would normally love due to my obsession with garlic bread, but I switched to ASDF and it just works better. One thing I'm noticing is that the UI is frustrating because it won't let me select specific characters even though I'm selecting the select button. Is this actually because I can't select all these characters? You also can't move and attack at the same time, so you basically have zero momentum in the game, which just feels wrong, meaning less combos, but then sometimes it actually works, so it's just very finicky now after understanding why some games have failed why some don't fit this genre and why windows hates itch.io it's time to return to steam see one of the things about my video about bounty battle back in 2020 was that it showed the concept of review bombing i bought this game as soon as it came out i intentionally did not look at the reviews and i made my own conclusion which shows that it is important to make your own conclusions before judging a piece of media instead of just seeing mixed or negative on the steam Steam page and clicking off. Something that I also should have mentioned four years ago is that I get it. You wouldn't want to spend your hard earned money on a game like this if you had doubts that it could possibly be bad. But as someone who actually bought the game after making the video, I never touched this game again. This is mostly because when I make a video on a game for the main channel, I finish it from beginning to end. So typically there's no reason to return to it. With this game, it was more fun to analyze it than play it, especially from looking at the perspective of what other people thought of this game. Is this the best indie cross fighting game? No but it definitely was controversial. Dark Screen Games, a phoenix rising from six years worth of ashes, a collaborative effort that came out of nowhere, a visually pleasing couch multiplayer game that lets you play as many well-loved indie characters, a multitude of modes and arenas to choose from, and a soundtrack that enhances the gameplay. When the game is first started, it opens with a cinematic, which is the first initial reveal trailer that got released when news about this game spread across the entire internet. The animation in it flows beautifully, showing off the epic indie characters being sucked into portals. Whoa! Oh, <laughs> that fell off. <laughs> With a cinematic song that portrays the excitement on it. After this gorgeous cinematic, one will stumble across the tutorial. In this, self-aware humor comes right out of the gate and lets you know that, hey, this game isn't that serious, you're just supposed to have fun with it. Leading you to learn the key features of bounty battle, chain combos, ultimate attacks, special attacks, double jump, jump dodge, and a feature that no one expected, bounty points. Get it? Cause it's called bounty battle. Hey, you know how it be. <laughs> Bounty points can buy minions, which can fight alongside with. <laughs> Bruh. Bunch of stuff fell from my dresser. Which can fight alongside you. However, if you spam attacks, you actually end up losing bounty points. Which, yes, you actually get penalized for button mashing by not only losing said bounty points, but by being dazed for multiple seconds, leaving you open to attacks. So if you know anybody who's gotten annoyed because somebody keeps using Ness's PK fire from Smash way too much, I've got a solution for you. The current roster that doesn't include Ness houses 30 characters, 23 of them from other developers and 7 from dark screen games themselves. 23 of them are Stargrove from the Ruin of the Reckless, 
the prisoner from Dead Cells, and Super Combo Man from his self-titled game. Wow, way to be a narcissist, Super Combo Man. Hey guys, I'm Super Combo Man. I'm so cool that they named the game after me because that's all anybody knows me for. Rusty from SteamWorld Dig, Otis from Owlboy, I mean, Shammy's gonna love this one, Hermetic Champion from Tower of Samsara, The Penitent from Blasphemous, Rudy from Bubble Blasters, Gully from Battle Chases Nightmare, Captain Flinthook from Flint hook at least it's half narcissistic and not super combo man originally i thought it was sh uh like uh hollow knight but no <laughs> oddmar fish from nuclear throne tetra block from blocks that matter shield maiden from e eared iter eater iter eater i E eats is Isra. Harry from the Big Butcher. Thora from Jotun. Pankapu, the Unslain from Doko Took. Or is it Took? Honestly, no clue. Agent of Death from Death's Gambit. Trace from Axiom Verge. The Crusader from Darkest Dungeon. Sheriff Lone Star from Awesome Dots. That's my boy right there. And Juan from Guacamelee. While the other seven are from dark screen games Olaf, Azel, Atlas, Tyran, Lazarus, Lilith, and R 1812. Whoa, wait a minute. I didn't know you could build. Is this Minecraft? No, actually. It's Blocks That Matter Arena, a cube driven world where 2D characters fight in a 3D space. Then there's Tower, a rocky terrain that screams solitude. Ruins, a fiery mess of rubble. Forest, a watery pool of destruction. Arcade, which is the same one from the tutorial. An open arcade cabinet that shows concept art on the screen. As well as a joystick that moves when you do. Owlboy Arena, grassy field filled with graves of the dead. While a chorus of joy is being played in the background. What am I, Italian? Hey! Flint Hook Arena, a dark ship in space that proclaims adventure. Darkest Dungeon Arena, a name that literally means what it says because I can't see a thing. Wakamele Arena, a desert town ringing with trumpets. Dead Cell Arena, hosts cells of chaos with jars hanging from the ceiling. Which is something that was probably found off of Pinterest. Oh my gosh, have you seen my jars hanging from the ceiling? Great aesthetic for this jail cell. Big Butcher Arena, a metal hallway showcasing a big piece of machinery. Tower of Samsara Arena, the base of a mighty tower as you prevent any enemy foes from entering. Nuclear Throne Arena, an empty wasteland where heat is not just against the players, but in the environment. Axiom Verge Arena, a crimson ancient temple. Awesome Knots Arena, a floating platform subtly hinting at the fact that you will die because of bones protruding out of the arena. Probably not though. Again, looking a little too deep there. Oddmar Arena, a high risen circle arena where many foes do to death. While there are only 16 arenas, there are 6 game modes to choose. Count, Lifetime, Training, Challenge, Tournament. Count is based on the amount of lives you have. So basically if you have no lives, you've lost. Life is where you have to get a certain amount of kills to win. Unlike, you know, actual life. Time is where you fight until you run out of time. It's Pretty self-explanatory. Training is where the other characters are ragdoll you fight in the arcade, except it's a different color scheme. Tournament is where you beat all the foes, and in the process, you actually earn some skins. So no kids, you actually have to work for these skins. No using mommy's credit card on this one. What do you think this is? Fortnite? In conclusion, Bounty Battle is a combat feels really slow and clunky. Brawlhalla is better and it's free. No. Combat looks like go away. Bounty battle! A side of jokes. It doesn't look anything like you see in the trailer. Controls are unintuitive on a keyboard. I wait, hold on. But one can okay. change you um, on the keyboard. Yes, I'm playing fightings hey, get, with a keyboard. Get out of here! Bounty battle! One of the worst video oh, games I've okay, ever played. Okay, Trust okay, me, no, run no, away! Okay, I understand. Zero yes, out of ten. yes, there's bad things with it. I get it, okay? Like, it has flaws, and... I, I understand. Remote Hell, play together okay. is the only way to play online, and it feels awful. It's half-baked on all fronts. Okay, wait, but like, but, 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 the AI I, okay, is not good at no, all. But, I was able to beat the highest level bots by just spamming light attack. The animations and hit registry are atrocious. The special moves are a bunch okay, of sparkle like, effects. But, but you, 
but you didn't think- I was looking forward to playing this game for so long, but unfortunately, the game's still quite buggy. I have no idea if they ever consider asking community for help to fix, then maybe it could go somewhere, but now it's pretty meh. Characters feel floaty and slippery and don't have very many moves to boot. Each character has a, a few directional inputs and a light slash heavy attack. Other than that, no. all the characters no. share basically the same moves. No not other people's opinions, please. This game Ow. looks horrible. Oh. Some of the promised content is I'm now back. being resold to us ah, as okay. DLC. Uh, I, get, uh, I get it, okay. Ow. We done. This game has disappointed me greatly, and that sucks because the source material games are all made with so much love and it just feels like a janky flash game that was made in three days for an indie game jam. Best part of the game is the roster, but that isn't a compliment for a game rather than it is for the indie game characters they bought the rights to. Easily beat the hardest difficulty AI just by button mashing to light attack, which is a problem because there's no online except for the Steam remote play. Sound design is poor. The announcer sounds like someone trying to imitate an over-the-top WWE announcer. Bottom of the line, just don't buy this game unless there's some drastic improvements to it. I'd like to point out that this man played 12 minutes of this game and had all of this to say. Ugh. Ugh, please. No more other people's opinions, I get it. Generally, Bounty Battle is a fun to play local couch multiplayer game that's simple enough to learn, is visually appealing, includes plenty of variety with every aspect of the game, and answers the age old question of who would really win in a fight to the death instead of having to trust death battle for that info. Despite the genuine fun I actually had, because I'm the one who played it for plus six hours instead of less than an hour than most of these people did. Criticisms were also revealed without even looking at the bad reviews. Just by playing the game in an objective and honest perspective, letting the game speak for itself, many notes were had. I gotta redo that. Many notes were had. Why aren't you separating? Many notes were had. There we go. These regard mostly the game mechanics. The few criticisms are as follows. First, there's no air recovery, meaning that say you grab somebody near a ledge and push them, they literally can't do anything about it. So basically, if you're grabbed at that point, there's not much you can do except parry it. But even then, that's a grab bag in and of itself. So since they can't do anything about it, please at least add an air recovery feature, Mr. Francois. Second, you can't exit out of the tutorial. Like, Come on. Third, respawn time is seven seconds. It's too long. It should be at least three to four seconds max. It probably shouldn't even be that long, but if you were to cut that time in half, that would really help. Because currently, it ruins the flow of the game, especially if you only have two people playing. Fourth, most of the stages just don't have creative names, making the stage names look a little lazy. Ah yes, I can't wait to play Tower of Samsara Arena. I am so excited. Ah yes, I'm so excited to play Name of Developers Game Arena. I can't wait. Ah yes, I'm so pumped to play Subscribe Arena. Yeah! Ugh, I'm breaking your sweat from that. That's sad. Listen, Tower, Ruins, Arcade, and Forest. I know that they're not the most creative names, but these show that they at least tried. Six, you have to have teams on all the time. Do you know what? Fine, Bounty Battle. You can take that one. I don't care at this point. Now comes the biggest criticism. The minions. Don't get me wrong, I appreciate the fact that Dark Screen basically wanted to make their own assist trophy, but it just... It doesn't flow right. It doesn't feel like the minions do a whole lot, and the minion effects aren't sometimes not even that obvious to begin with. And sure, some minions' effects are 
completely obvious, but some I still don't know what they actually do. Minions are fine in concept, but when the tutorial only says they fight alongside with you, it doesn't give me a good gauge as to what they actually contribute to the fight. Most of the time it never gives an indication that they're actually doing anything until the effect is present. So they just seem kind of pointless most of the time. Basically, if their cues were more obvious and it was obvious that an effect was being casted on the actual enemies, then it would be fine because if their cues were more obvious and they were more obvious for all of the minions and you could actually tell when the effect is actually being casted then they wouldn't feel like unsupportive parents basically minions either feel like they do nothing or they do too much and the middle ground there is just not supported regarding the reviews yes Guess all you, I'm getting to you. The common thread here was that people felt like the controls were janky or clumsy, which personally, I didn't feel that whatsoever. And honestly thought the combat was simple to learn and easy to master. But when you keep comparing it to Rivals of Aether, Brawlhalla, Indie Pogo, Super Smash Brothers, Stick Fight, then you're not truly looking at the game objectively. Instead, you're comparing it to already well-loved and established titles that are already getting praise and already have gotten praise. Honestly, I think because of multiple delays for the game and a high expectation from multiple people, said people already had a sour taste in their mouth, which infected the experience of the game. Instead of appreciating and recognizing that we don't get a lot of these games nowadays, it seems like Indie Pogo and then this game is like the only two real big ones and I hope in the future that we actually get to see more and more of these indie collaborations because I think in general the concept is really cool. Obviously it's not original because Indie Pogo already did it but I do appreciate that Bounty Battle tried and they tried something different and I think that's the key here. They need to try something different in order for it to work. Sometimes it doesn't work, sometimes it does. I learned about the game about a week before the actual release and because of that I had zero preconceived notions going into it. Which makes me feel like not a lot of people got that opportunity because it was built up so much. Bounty Battle shows the importance of looking at things objectively and to try things for yourself before making a conclusion and also not playing the game for less than an hour or not even half an hour and then make a bad review because you didn't actually try all of the game. You played it for five seconds, left a bad review. That's the other thing. It just feels like that this game got review bombed by somebody. I can't prove that, but if you look at the, the, the reviews, it, that's just how it feels. I played the game myself and made my own objective conclusions before I looked at any reviews. Not everyone is gonna like one specific thing due to unique tastes that we all have. What matters is giving it a fair shot for yourself so that way you don't live in regret of truly not knowing if it was worth your time. Just because some people said it was bad. You know, the 13 people. <laughs> don't let negativity impact you in a bad way, but instead let it inspire you and motivate you to look at it objectively. Man, four years ago was a long time. I wonder if the developer applied any of the critiques I had for this game. Well, kinda? Here, let me show you. Out of all my criticisms, half of them were just ignored, a few I couldn't tell if they actually fixed or not, and then only two of my criticisms actually got fixed, plus I found some new problems that I didn't find before. It's been like four years, and now the Steam page is mostly negative, and honestly, out of all the games we've tried in this genre, it is definitely not my favorite out of all of them. It kind of just feels like the dev gave up on the game, honestly, which is sad to see, especially since there's been no new updates for new content in the span of four years years. Let's just say the cinematic trailer was more impressive than the actual game. Go All Out has a very unique intro cinematic and roster too. There's a daily reward function and already my stomach is starting to unsettle. There's a game store where you can spend gyao points to customize your character, but only these five characters. As far as I can tell, there are no microtransactions, so that's a good sign. So it seems like these gyao points are earned in game. But since I don't want to customize any of these characters, I don't see a point. There's a $10 version and a free to play version. So I chose the free to play one mostly because soon I will not have that option. Um, why is there only five characters? That intro had 
a lot more than five characters there's five game modes you can only play with empty lobbies and multiplayer there's a game store where you can only customize the characters you have already unlocked speaking of which tesla kid looks nothing like his art what did they do to you i do like the 3d graphics and that's about it there are 19 stages with a wide variety of accessibility settings which is actually kind of nice so i'll give props for that there's a cross stage feature okay this is actually really cool well, I thought that was going to look different. How do I say this? It's like the feel of an early access game, but it isn't early access. I'm so happy I didn't buy this. Honestly, all the modes feel exactly the same except for Bag Smash. Oh my gosh, these lasers are so annoying. In order to unlock more characters, you have to play classic arcade mode but I don't want it. The controls feel stiff, none of the characters feel good to play, and I want to go home. At least I get Giao coins for when I win. I'm sorry, but the cinematic is just so misleading, which is why I have a problem with cinematic trailers in the first place. Like, just show me the gameplay. Blade Strangers was made by Studio Sizensen. Since the publisher is Nicalis, it makes sense that characters from Binding of Isaac and Cave Story appear in this game, since they are all under the Nicalis publisher name. Shovel Knight is also available in the game, even though that IP is from Yacht Club Games. So how is this character in this game? Well, while trying to find that answer, I found a different answer to a different question. Nicalis's reputation as a publisher. I'm not gonna go into it, but uh, it's weird that it happened three times, right? Anyways, the Shovel Knight developers know he's in the game, so one would think that Studio Sizensen got permission to use Shovel Knight as a character and I'm not seeing anything that says otherwise. I do have a confession to make, however. Right as I was about to buy all the games that I would consider to be indie crossover fighting games, I was a few dollars short. So I had to cut Blade Strangers from the list because I didn't have enough money. There are only two popular indie game characters. I cannot describe the feel of the game without playing the game, obviously. And also, Nicalis has a questionable reputation. So honestly, this just kind of worked out in my favor. Speaking of Blade Strangers, there's another weird one called Crystal Crisis, where it's basically a combination of Tetris and game characters. And if you think this counts as an indie crossfighter, you cannot control the characters. So no, it doesn't count. And also the characters are from the Nicalis publisher. So we're just not gonna touch these. And now it's time to talk about one of the more popular indie crossfighters, Indie Pogo. I've known about this game for years and I've never had a chance to try it until now. With controller being recommended up front, logo popping up on screen, and an initial dialogue box introducing us to the game as well as complimenting us, a message from the developers, and a tutorial which now explains the name. See, I'm not even touching my controller at all here. I'll prove it. Now before you jump to conclusions, this is actually an auto jumper game which I actually had no clue about until just now. I'm not gonna lie, this tutorial made me love this game. It feels satisfying to play, the movement flows just right, different movements mean different attacks, the music goes hard. Is that purple guy? The first tutorial battle was against Shovel Knight, and while the jumping mechanic took a second to get used to, it made the game more challenging than a normal fighting game. After the tutorial, we are met with a vibrant, pixelated start screen, transitioning ever so smoothly to the hub world. Battle, options, credits, community, marketplace, and exit. Options, credit, and exit are obvious, so let's focus on the marketplace. Here we have the shop, trophies, and the gotcha pot, which is how you get trophies. In the shop, you can buy profile emblems, stages, skins, taunts, characters, DLC, and gosh, this is a long list. All of which is bought with in-game coins, except for the DLC, which leads you to a Steam store page of microtransactions. In the community blimp are patch notes, announcements, and social media pages. Now it's time to battle. We have single player, the restrooms, which I'm not sure what this does yet local battle online and information hey look it's sir palo single player has four modes arcade battle challenges infinite pogo and training arcade battle has eight different characters to choose from and is a mode where you have to fight a bunch of different characters to win challenges have a specific objective to complete while fighting which has a difficulty option infinite pogo is a mode where you have to survive for as long as possible while also being timed completing any of these modes will result in obtaining more coins except training. Local battle lets you fight against CPUs or other people in the same room. So CPUs it is. Information gives you stats. Anyway, so here is online mode that basically isn't possible without joining the Discord server. 
So that's cool. As you can see, we have nine base characters and you can unlock 10 more from the store from the looks of it. And according to the roster, there are 19 characters in total. However, there are four DLC characters, one of which is Dust. You know, the whole reason I fell down this rabbit hole in the first place. Well, when you go to the DLC page, these four characters are not currently available. And this game has been out since 2018. So looks like the game has been abandoned for the most part since the last patch note was two years ago and there are literal scrapped content pages all about this game just floating around the internet. And while Dust isn't in those scrapped pages, I doubt that we will see any more new characters from this game. And I'm sad that I can't play as Dust in one of these types of games. Now, before the most recent iteration of this style of game, there was Super Smash Bros. Playod9 from the Claw Gaming created this beloved fan game of Super Smash Bros. on Armor Games. While on the surface it looks like a Super Smash Bros. melee clone, the difference was it's incredibly loud, had characters that weren't in any of the official games, and was a bare bones version. Super Smash Flash 2 takes a while to load, has a disclaimer at the beginning to make it clear that they are not profiting off of Nintendo's IP, is a fan version of Brawl, like seriously look how similar they look. There are a lot more characters at the beginning of the game, and some characters that are not in the official game like Chibi Robo, Black Mage, and Rayman. The music goes hard, and there are so many stages. These developers are the same ones who made Framemakers, an early access indie crossover fighting game. The menu is very similar to Brawl, but puts its own spin on it. We have a section on the right here that has your basics, with the extras containing feedback, replays, and credits. The news tab leads you to the Framemakers News Hub, where every month there has been some sort of update, so hopefully they won't bounce like Indie Pogo did. We currently only have five characters available, with four more being locked away. One of the different aspects to this game is that you have assist characters, which are specific abilities you can whip out on occasion. Kind of like an assist trophy, except it's on demand with a cooldown period. My first impression of the characters, animations, and movement is that this is the best I've seen out of all of these games. So from a style and technical standpoint, they have nailed it out of the park with this one. Now this is an early access game that feels like a finished game. That was the group game mode with three CPUs, which ran great. Now it's time for some online. Never mind, there are no lobbies. Training mode lets you figure out the controls and try new combos, as expected. Now there's one aspect of custom mode that really makes this game stand out. Custom characters, which you can get from the Steam Workshop or make yourself. In the Workshop, there's 1,125 items in total, and Dust is not one of them is very sad, but after looking through the 38 pages on the Steam Workshop, I found all of these. So now I can finally live out my dream of seeing Scott Pilgrim with Battle Cat, Sackboy with Heavy Weapons Guy, Slenderman with Omori, and Sans with the Eye Like Trains Kid all fighting over who stole the diamonds from the community chest in Minecraft. And if you're wondering, yes. You can have Bender with Fry, Peppa Pig with Bark, Garfield with Skipper, and Mr. Krabs with Omni-Man at the Krusty Krab. Now obviously, this is the best indie crossfighter, but the question is, can I actually make Dust a custom character using free tools and over a hundred pages of Google Docs? Well, since I have those Roku game comments echoing in my head of how I should have made a Roku game, now's my chance for redemption. Or not, because, well, from my perspective, Fray Tools doesn't work because I can't get it to export for the life of me. I followed the steps numerous times only to end up at the same exact stopping point. I'm not the only one with this issue. More and more people currently have had the same exporting problem. So please, developers, fix Fray Tools. Unless the reason it stopped working was because of Nintendo. And if your Fray Tools actually works, please make Dust a custom character. This entire time I've wanted to play as Dust in one of these fighting games but the problem is i've never had that experience and that is because these developers plan for dust to be in the game and then dust never appears or worse dust is in the game but then the game goes absolutely defunct making it lost media it took 17 games to get to frame makers since 2015 for almost a decade many teams have risen and fallen in an attempt to make a successful indie crossover fighting game many cameos have been present a lot of these games have died, some controversies have been discovered, and it's all led us to Frame Makers. Honestly, this is the best one for its animation, gameplay, custom characters, 
and the fact that it's the only one that is still currently alive. I can't wait for this game to officially release, get out of early access, and for them to finally fix freight tools, or at the very least, add dust to the game. Please, no, seriously, I, that, that's literally all. I've suffered so much.